It's a pleasure for me to speak to such distinguished audience. And yes, we at Siemens, we make a lot of that stuff that was referred to in previous uh, contributions. We do imaging and therapeutic equipment. We do diagnostic, laboratory diagnostics equipment. We do healthcare IT, and we do hearing aids. The question for us is always, um, or the question raised to us, this must be a nice business to be in because um, your market is always expanding. It's not just that people get older and thus they need longer services, which is good for our business, and the, the expectation in healthcare, they rise, the quality of care, the demand for quality of care goes up, so we must, should be facing uh, tremendous opportunities. Well, in, rea in reality, we all know that uh, healthcare systems are under pressure, that there is a big question whether we get the right return for the money and so forth. So it's always question, do we need that fast pace of innovation? Because every new equipment that goes out there raises additional costs and every time uh, we, we see one of these big tomographs, we say, okay, someone needs to make images with it and um, amortize the, cap the cost of capital. Now, we at Siemens, we believe that offending innovation would be the stupidest thing to do. And uh, I will share some of the basic ideas. I've touched on that already. Some of the basic ideas with you raising uh, the necessity for uh, innovation, or to put it into different words, this system cannot survive and cannot transform without innovation. And when I talk innovation, I mean both. I mean product innovations, and I will share a few aspects with you uh, in a minute, but I mean in particular process innovations. We believe we can do things differently in healthcare, thus fulfilling both requirements, increase the quality of care, and reduce the cost of care. Let me share some ideas on what product innovations can be about. This was the quality of magnetic resonance image in, in the 80s when I joined Siemens in the MR department. And this is what we get today. We get not just morphologic information, we get systemic information, we get functional information, all of that. And we get to that quality uh, which is a comparison between an in vivo image and a cadaver section, and we find that we don't have to kill the patient to diagnose uh, what it is about. We can keep him alive and, and achieve similar image quality. But the big, the big product innovations will arise from combining image information. And here is an example of a PET MR where we see the PET image, the MR image, and in the middle we see the fused image of the two simultaneously acquired, and we find the, uh, that we not only find the region of interest, but we find the morphological uh, uh, arena where it is located, and we find that the information content in the center image is bigger than the individual or the sum of the information contents in the two images uh, with the individual modalities, in this case, a PET and an MR scanner. So obviously, not just the, the, uh, the diagnostic arena, also the therapeutic arena uh, is affected, and here you find means on, on how to, to put the dose uh, to the right place. The, uh, the uh, area of interest is, is described, and we find that a photons conventional radiation therapy would cover a much bigger area with dose than, than needed, and that going into protons or even into carbon, we could narrow uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, tissue unaffected and could spare uh, healthy tissue uh, from radiation by applying the right radiation uh, 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 character. And this is uh, also due to that we add more specificity into, into our diagnostic devices. And here to the left, you find always in the upper portion the traditional FDG, 
uh, um, uh, measurement, FDG, meaning uh, that you have uh, some, some idea for the metabolic activity, though there is tissue activity, while at the lower portion you find obviously totally different, uh, different uh, patterns. And, and if you take the case on, on the left side, you find uh, the glioblastoma uh, much more differentiated. And the, uh, the, the po pictures in yellow give you the areas where you need more doses to kill the tumor uh, than in the other case. So if you have radiation that can go to the square or the cubic millimeter, then you also need the diagnosis to know where your cubic millimeters are. The same thing holds true for other, for other specific diseases like angiogenesis, which is a tumor marker, or also amyloid plux, which is an, uh, an important marker uh, for, for Alzheimer's disease. Here you find it, it's correlated with histology, and it's definitely telling us uh, the more specific the diagnosis, the more information we have, the more specific we can apply the te therapy, and the more assured can we be that we don't apply the wrong therapy. Because the stupidest thing that you can do uh, uh, is spending a lot of costs by treating a disease that is not there. Uh, that means it's wrongly diagnosed or you're you applying a method, a drug, or whatsoever that doesn't work. And we all know in our families that we had people, cancer patients or so, that got treated with drugs that didn't work, and then they had to go for another, uh, for another session of cytostatics to, uh, to cure the cancer. And that leads me already to we have to do something different in, uh, in our processes. I would call that an industrialization of healthcare, and I don't mean that we put everyone into these white cold apparatus and get them treated by robotics. I'm more referring to a thinking. Thinking like uh, we do in industry, uh, what can we do better? How can we avoid redundancies? How can we learn from, from, uh, from the previous patient? And how can we systemize? Because there is some inefficiency in healthcare systems because it's so experience-based. We need experienced physicians. And in order to have a new generation of physics, we, uh, physicists, uh, physicians, excuse me, we need to train them again until they have their experience. And the question is, can we do better by simply accessing the knowledge? And we know that to, in today's environment, knowledge has a different character. We can store knowledge, we can access knowledge in a much better way. Think about Google, which was in the previous session. Think about how you can the, access the knowledge that is out there. And, and doing that adequately, because one thing is clear, we don't have a problem of, of creating enough information about our patient. We have the problem in selecting about the, from the gigabytes that we are creating the ones of relevance. And this is not necessarily an image that we, that we need, because if you look at the business models associated to healthcare, it's, it's the, the value streams go more along the treatment uh, chains. So we don't pay anymore for an image, or we pay, don't pay for a data set of, of, of blood parameters. We pay for the process. We pay for making the patient healthy, or we pay for at least the entire integrated approach. So this is what I mean by industrialization. And, and, and here is one way of, of easing those processes. You have all these iPads, therefore I put it on. You can look while you attend my presentation at, you, at the patient that is currently in your system. And, and you can uh, use your phone or even the iPad in, in giving a recommendation. And the recommendation is not only this is what your patient has, it's also this is what most probably will help the patient. And this is what I mean by exploiting the right uh, data out of your gigabytes that you're typically creating. And this brings me to my last point. The thing is clear. We don't have a problem of, of creating enough information about our patient. We have the problem in selecting about the, from the gigabytes that we are creating the ones of relevance. And this is not necessarily an image 
that we, that we need, because if you look at the business models associated to healthcare, it's, it's the, the value streams go more along the treatment uh, chains. So we don't pay anymore for an image, or we pay, don't pay for a data set of, of, of blood parameters, we pay for the process, we pay for making the patient healthy, or we pay for at least the entire integrated approach. So this is what I mean by industrialization, and, and, and here is one way of, of easing those processes. You have all these iPads, therefore I put it on. You can look while you attend my presentation at you, the patient that is currently in your system, and, and you can uh, use your phone or even the iPad in, in giving a recommendation. And the recommendation is not only this is what your patient has, it's also this is what most probably will help the patient. And this is what I mean by exploiting the right uh, data out of your gigabytes that you're typically creating. And this brings me to my last point, and this is about what kind of knowledge do we gain? Yes, we have images, we have patient factors when we ask the patient what, what hurts, what's wrong with you, and then we have those individual data that was referred to uh, already as, as individualized medicine. We know about the proteome, about the genome, we know about the metabolome of the patient, and we can do what, what intuitively physicians do over generations, also more and more in an automated way. That means extracting data, extracting those to the right level and bringing them into knowledge systems. And every patient that we add to that system adds additional knowledge. And let's face it, we are not talking here a flu that can be treated with a single drug. We are talking multimorbidity. We are talking patients who have problems uh, because they have other diseases. So they have, they have uh, 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 say, uh, some neurodegeneration uh, associated with diabetes, associated with high blood pressure, and so forth. So it's a complex phenomenon that we typically see. And, and reference cases for complex, for complex phenomena are rarely to find. The computer can find them out of millions of, of other patients. And this is what I would then call the fundamentals of, of tomorrow's healthcare system. It is that we need to understand the disease, still understand the disease in diagnosing the patient adequately with imaging, with, uh, uh, with laboratory diagnostics, with, with conventional uh, uh, examination processes. But then we need to understand his individuality his specific response to a drug, is he a responder? Does he need high dose or low dose because of the cytochrome of the liver and so forth? Understanding how he typically responds. And in order to be capable of, of solving this complexity, we need a very sophisticated knowledge-based IT system. And this only in combination leads us to this industrialization of, of healthcare where, we, where every, every patient that we treat in a more and more optimized way also gives input to the databases of future patients to be treated. Thank you for listening.